just trying to make a new type of video that I haven't made before. We'll see how it goes. I thought it might be fun if I just kind of make a random video where I read a PEP. PEP stands for a Python Enhancement Proposal. And if you didn't know, the Python language is improved periodically through these different proposals, and they're all readable on the web. If we take a look, um, this is the specification for Whiskey. What is Whiskey? First of all, uh, Whiskey stands for Web Server Gateway Interface. It's a specification for Python. The goal of Whiskey is to separate the choice of framework from the choice of web server, as they say in the PEP. Basically, it was inspired by the Java Servlet API. So Java had a bunch of web frameworks which were all sort of compatible with uh, web servers that implemented that Servlet API. And the Python web frameworks at the time in the early 2000s didn't have any such like unified spec. Uh, you might have heard of Whiskey if you've ever made a Django app or a Flask app. So the goal of Whiskey was to provide something that was really simple for framework authors to use to create their web application framework. The whole rationale is to keep it as simple as possible. No frills, no response objects, no cookie handling. Um, it, the goal is not to make something that's complicated for people to implement because then no one will implement it and it won't suit the goals, right? It was never intended for the individual application developer to use. It was intended for people to make things like Django and like Flask. If we scroll up to the top, you will see that the rationale is that there's a wide variety of web application frameworks, such as a bunch that I've never heard of uh, because they're from 2003. Um, but they're not interoperable. Unlike in Java, where the Servlet API makes it possible for applications written with any Java web application framework to run in any web server that supports the Servlet API. So, today, uh, you would write a Django app or Flask app and you could serve that with G-Unicorn or MicroWiskey or any kind of web server that implement, implements the gateway side of the Whiskey spec. The whiskey spec basically has two sides. It has the server slash gateway side, and then it has the application slash framework side, which is your Django, your Flask. Um, and basically the job of your framework, like Django, is to return an application callable. A callable is either a function or an object that has the dunder call method, which in Python means that you can call that class as if it were a function. Um, and the side, the, the, the side that implements the gateway um, side of the spec, so MicroWiskey or GUnicorn, they take that application callable, they call it with two arguments. One of them is a Python dictionary that has um, keys that are specified in the common gateway interface spec, so things like the request method, like get or post or put, um, and the URL scheme and things like that. Um, and the other argument to the application callable is a start response function, which the, the callable will use before it returns the content. It uses that start response to write the headers, the HTTP headers, and the status code. Yeah, we have the server or gateway side and the application or framework side. Basically explain that. Let's just go down here and we'll see this is the sample application or framework side. So we will see this here is kind of your simplest example of what a application callable will be. Um, it takes the environ dictionary and it, the start response callable and it makes a status code 200 OK. The response headers, that is a, a tuple with your content types. That's an example of one of the headers. You could set many different headers, of course. You could set this to something like application slash JSON if you're making an API that returns JSON, or you could you know, include authorization headers or whatever you want. Then you call the start response uh, function to start writing the headers, and then you return an iterable with the content. Now, the reason that this is an iterable and not merely the content itself, by the way, this hello world is up here, it's bytes. Um, the reason why is kind of hinted at here. You see this is yielding because this is actually a generator. So the fact that it's an iterable means that it's a little bit easier to introduce asynchronicity into it, I guess. <laughs> I, I, that's my assumption anyway, based on reading this. Uh, the server gateway side, 
not something that you would be really writing yourself, or at least not something that I am writing myself, but this is um, the side that would be in something like Micro Whiskey, where you see this is kind of your main function here. It takes the application callable from your Django or Flask app or Fast CGI or whatever, sets some of these environment uh, keys that are specified in the Whiskey spec, like errors for writing to standard error. Um, and then you'll see down here, it, it creates this start response uh, callable that it's going to pass into the application. And this function is taking the status and the response headers, writing it, and returning another function which writes, which is defined up here. If you're used to seeing a bunch of boilerplate from something like Django or whatever, um, like the core of the spec is actually very, very simple. And that's why you're able to have something super, super complicated and something that's very, very simple like Flask using kind of the same spec. If you look at the Flask source code here, this is app.py that defines the Flask object that you would create in your Flask app. And when you call the Flask object with the environ dict and the start response callable, uh, it calls the self whiskey app with the same thing. And then the whiskey app here, uh, it pushes the request context, which, um, with the environ, which basically puts these, um, puts this dictionary into that, um, request proxy that you can import from anywhere inside the flask framework. And then it pushes the context and it calls this full dispatch request to actually create the response. Uh, and then it calls the response object and actually returns to the server. Uh, and if you go to full dispatch request, of course I could spend a long time digging into the source code of Flask probably, but it, as it says here, it dispatches the request and it performs the request pre and post processing and HTTP exception catching and error handling. Basically, using the URL routing rules in Worksoig and stuff like that, it will look up the correct view function and call that. If it has to call pre-request functions before, it'll do that. If it has to call post-request functions that you've registered afterwards, and it'll do all that kind of stuff, and eventually bubble all the way back down to the bottom of the document where we're actually doing the Dunder call and go back out to the gateway side. So one of the goals of Whiskey was to enable middleware. Um, I think it's kind of self-explanatory, right? If the basic core is a simple function like this, of course, to make middleware, all you need to do is wrap that function. See, this has its own call method that takes the environ and the start response, and it does its own stuff that it wants to do to the data and just kind of wraps the underlying application. So see, when it returns, it calls the application callable, but with all of its stuff. So in that way, it happens in the middle between the two halves of the whiskey. <laughs> the environ parameter, the first parameter, it must be a built-in Python dictionary, not a subclass, nothing special like that, just a regular old dictionary containing CGI style environment variables. And here we have the definition of different environment variables, like the request method, as I said, the script name, uh, this is basically the beginning of the path and then the path info is everything after that that slash and then the start response callable Must return a write body data callable that takes one positional parameter a byte string to be written as part of the HTTP response body the, If the iterable returned by the application has a close method the server or gateway must call that method upon completion of the current request whether that request was completed normally or terminated early due to an application error during iteration or an early disconnect of the browser. Hmm. If you're interested in Whis Whiskey and you want to learn more, uh, I would highly request reading PEP 3333, um, reading the Flask source code, especially this app.py file. It's very educational. Flask is pretty simple. Um, there's a lot of a lot of layers, um, you know, because of things like the pre-request, the post-request, there's all kinds of like different layers of convenience, but at the core of it, Flask is quite simple. And if you understand Python, um, I think you'll understand this source code. It's actually pretty, pretty readable. Here in the paste documentation, I've never used paste, but this is something else that uh, I find kind of educational. We have another example here of a simple whiskey application callable that takes the environment in the start response 
checks if it's a post request or a get request, and if it's a get request, it returns an, an HTML form. If it's a post request, then it tries to parse the form. So it's a very simple example. Yeah, that's about it for this video, probably. So here's a point to end it on, really minor point, not a big deal, but if you want to avoid a little bit of configuration, according to the spec, the application callable is called application, and um, MicroWSGI for one will actually respect that, and if your callable is called application, then you don't have to tell MicroWSGI what your uh, callable is actually called. You can tell it what the Python module is, and it will just assume that it's called application, and you could save yourself one line of config. So <laughs> there's a, a pointless little detail. <laughs> um, yeah, bye-bye.